Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and welcome to the second video blog post in my Python for C Sharp developer series. In this series, we're going to be exploring Python from a .NET C Sharp developer's perspective by looking at all the key features of the C Sharp language and sort of the .NET environment, and see how those features appear and manifest themselves in Python. So in this particular one, we're going to look at IDEs in Visual Studio. So if you do any C Sharp .NET development, you live and breathe Visual Studio. And Visual Studio is a great IDE. And of course, one of the things you may be thinking is, if I were to try to work in some other language, well, I just couldn't see giving up Visual Studio, right? I mean, we're .NET developers. We're working with Visual Studio all the time, and it's we really love it, generally speaking. So. Um, what could we do if we were doing Python? Uh, a lot of times when you see people talking about Python, they'll just come over here and say, well, let's fire up Python, and we'll just say import random, and then we can call some functions like random.randint, as we saw in the last video, things like that. Well, this is a long, quite a far cry from, from that. Um, we've, you know, a lot of people uh, use Emacs and them and to a lesser degree maybe sublime text but I'm still a big believer of IDEs in IDEs and I think you'll see there's some really good options here so you know if coming from C sharp of course we love Visual Studio and we don't want to give it up what could we use if we were going to do Python well guess what you can use Visual Studio to do Python and not in some sort of hooky way like well it's a text editor and it'll edit Python files for you, but in like the real sense that uh, Visual Studio is a great IDE for this environment. So let's go over here and look at Visual Studio. Um, if you go and notice there's a link down here, pytools.codeplex.com. This is the thing from Microsoft called Python Tools for Visual Studio. Scott Hanselman recently blogged a really nice blog post on it. If you go over here, if you have them installed, you can say new project, and there's now a Python section scrolling down, a Python section with the Django, WPF, and Silverlight Iron Python support, and regular Python, not Iron Python, plain old regular Python support. So let's just create this simple application here. And here we've got some Python environment settings, other things. And here's our main application, PY. We can have as many Python files as we want. And let's just use the um, code from the last uh, session we did, where we had an application that goes and gets a bunch of days. And for each day, it gets some random weather, weather reports and prints them out. So I'll go ahead and run that. And just control F5 or F5 like you would in Visual Studio if you wanted to debug it. And there you go. There's the output just like a .NET console application or some other kind of console application. That's pretty cool, huh? And if you want to go down here and put a breakpoint in, you can come down and say, well, let's put a breakpoint right here, 5, runs down to this point, and then eventually comes to a stop here. You can hover over things like days, and there you can see what the days are. And you can expand it out pin it, just like you would in regular Visual Studio. And there, as you work with it, you'll see what those values are. We could do the same for day. If I step one more, pin day, move that over here. So F10, as you step through this, you can see the days are changing, and so on. Okay, so a lot of the cool stuff that you are, know and love about Visual Studio is still here. We get IntelliSense, so if I here and say get days list, and it knows, oops knows it takes no arguments. Go ahead and say days, does it know anything you got? It knows that uh, get days list is returning a list, and the list has these methods, append, pop, uh, insert, extend, things like that. So IntelliSense, um, things like that. You can see it shows it's returning a list. So it's, it's a very capable editor. However, there are better IDEs, as we'll see. We can come over here, you can see a little bit about the Python environment. Uh, whoops. You can work with virtual environments, change the Python environments, things like that. Here's some of the settings. Standard Python launcher, Iron Python to Django, pass arguments to it, and so on. Okay, so 
If you are a .NET developer and you love Visual Studio, here's some free tools you can plug into Visual Studio that allow you to do some really great Python stuff from Visual Studio. That said, if I were to go out and actually pick an IDE from just out of all the options out there, Visual Studio is not the one I'd pick. It's not custom built for Python. It's great, but it it really, there's a lot of features that are, are missing that we could have built into the IDE, right? So it's a pretty kind of like a lightweight express version of uh, Python IDE. There's a bunch of options, but what I would pick is I would pick PyCharm from JetBrains. So this is an IDE custom built for Python. You'll see there's a ton of features, there's code coverage, there's unit testing, there's a bunch of different web platforms, not just Django, but there's Pyramid. So if I were going to do this, I would be using PyCharm. So here's that same application, and just like you saw Visual Studio, we can put a breakpoint, we can say F5 and go and debug this app. Come down here, hover over days, here's the days, we can expand them out, play with them, things like that. Um, it gives you a lot uh, better support for sort of IntelliSense. Let me go ahead and stop the debugger here. Uh, a better support for IntelliSense on the built-in thing. So if I go over here and say random dot, it'll give me like a nice long list. There you go. Nice long list of those things. If I say something that's not here, like if I want to do some unit testing, so if I say unit test dot test case, for example, it knows that this isn't here. Just like ReSharper does for Visual Studio, it'll sort of import or add a reference, you know, the equivalent of add reference, it'll import this uh, module into this Python uh, file. Okay, so a lot of good stuff there. If I want to get help, like if I'm not really sure how rand int works, I can hit control Q and it'll actually go and pull up the, or the, uh, the documentation and tells me what it does. Uh, so, for example, it might be interesting to look here that actually this is an inclusive for the bounds, not just uh, exclusive, and things like that. So this is a much better ID. If you look at the features, let me pull up the settings here. So, for example, I can come down to the interpreters, and I can actually manage, um, can actually manage things like uh, all the various packages I have installed. I can you know, look at all, all the stuff that you can do over here um, compared to just the couple of options we had in Visual Studio. Not all of these are about Python, for example. Some of these are about just you know like IDE features, but all the stuff up here, this is all my Python project settings. So way more stuff we can do. Um, I can come over here and say run this with uh, code coverage, or if it had unit tests, I could say run the unit tests and I'd get a nice test runner. So on. So if I'm picking an IDE, I'm picking PyCharm. And there's free community editions. It's relatively cheap. It's like $99 for an individual, $200 for a company. Uh, ReSharper is more than that, right? And that's just a plugin for Visual Studio. Okay. And of course, if you're going to choose an IDE and you're a C Sharp developer, you have to have a decent debugging experience. Well, we already saw both the Python tools for Visual Studio and PyCharm has great debugging support as well as unit testing, code coverage, all this stuff. So um, go download the free PyCharm, check it out, get started, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.